place today. Hallelujah. Hey. Lord, I don't, don't want to stay in this place any longer. I hear you calling me to a higher place. Just 
Let's just keep it flowing. Thank you, Lord. Come on with some gratitude. No attitude, just gratitude. Everybody, come on in around the altar. Come on. Oh, thank you, Lord. God's been so good to us. Now, if you're not careful, the devil will trick you. And he'll only make you think about your problem. But go ahead and leave your problem alone for just another few moments. And think about how good God is. Is there anybody here that appreciate that you're not in the hospital this morning? Is there anybody that appreciates you not in the jailhouse this morning? Is there anybody that's been delivered from a drug problem or alcohol problem? Is there anybody here uh, grateful that your children are still in the earth? Are you, uh, are you grateful they're not in the hospital? Are you grateful this morning if you still got a mother in the earth, a father in the earth? Are you grateful you got a grandmother or grandfather in the earth? Is there anybody even this morning that can say, God, I thank you for peace of mind? Somebody that's not, oh my God, not you, you haven't lost your mind. You, you, you could have lost your mind, but you kept your sanity. Somebody that's not suicidal this morning. You, you might have had that kind of thoughts in the past, but you got sound mind this morning. Hallelujah. Okay, let's just go ahead, y'all, because 95% of the world wish they lived in America. 95% of the people that live in the earth wish they lived in America. Why? Because you and I haven't experienced what a lot of folks in the world are experiencing this morning. Come on, lift your hands. Just thank him for the cold coolness of this room. We could be really hot right now. It's 90 degrees. Come on. The air conditions don't have to work. We didn't have to have air conditions. We don't even have to have these nice uh, chairs that we sit on. We don't have to have a band, a praise team. We don't have to have even your pastor don't have to be here this morning. You don't have to have a first lady here. You don't have to have. Come on. Shake the devil off. And give God some praise. Come on, lift up your voice in this place. Lift it up for yourself. Don't wait for the pastor. Don't wait for the praise team. Don't wait for the band. Don't let the rocks cry out for you. Open up your mouth and give God the praise. Come on. Somebody shout glory. 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 Glory! Glory! Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you for dying for me! Thank you for saving my soul from a burning hell! Hallelujah! Come on, somebody say, you an awesome God, you an awesome God. Somebody told me on this last week that word is preserved only for God. Awesome is only preserved for God. Huh, it's a worship song. You an awesome God, you an awesome God. How many can just think back how oh, these are awesome God? When you were in trouble, the Lord was awesome in your life. Come on, somebody. Remember when you just know you were walking in rebellion and the Lord didn't let you die? You could have been dead. He could have let you die before you gave your heart to him. He's an awesome God. Woo! Come on, let's count our blessings one by one this morning. Thank you for food, thank you for clothes, thank you for shelter, thank you for a bed to sleep in a house, a roof over my head, thank you for a job, thank you for a car, thank you, hallelujah. Now let's worship a little bit more because you didn't earn it, I didn't earn it, that's how good God, that's why he's an awesome God. 
God don't hold grudges. God don't turn us away after we repent. God don't turn his back on us after we say we're sorry. But the Lord, he's an outstretched hand. He said, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Hallelujah. Come on, grab your neighbor's hand. God, I pray for my neighbor. I don't know what they're going through, but I lift him up because you're an awesome God. If they're sick, you're an awesome God. Heal them. God, if they're depressed, you're an awesome God. Speak peace to their minds. God, if they're burdened about a brother, if they're burdened about a sister, lift them up this morning. They're burdened about their children. They're burdened about their marriage, their finances, whatever it is. You an awesome God. You an awesome God. You an awesome God. Lord, we lift up the Lucas family, the Carter family, the Shaw family, everyone that has been touched, God, by this tragedy, God. We pray. We pray, comfort them, Lord. Comfort them, Lord. Comfort them, Lord. You can do it, Lord. Give them comfort, Lord. Comfort that mother, that father. Comfort those grandchildren. Comfort, Lord. Woo! Comfort the grandparents of me, Lord. Comfort, Lord. Oh, God, comfort the Oliver family on this morning. Be with the Oliver family, God. Comfort them, Lord. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Anyone, God, in the hospital, anyone going through, God. Rhonda, God, we lift up Sister Rhonda Washington. Continue to heal Rhonda, God. Continue to heal Dad Hunter, Mother Hunter. Continue to heal my brother-in-law, Tommy Wade, thank you for bringing him through his surgery. Thank you, God, for just touching his body. Now we thank you for his full recovery, Lord. Strengthen Mother Wade. Continue to strengthen all of the family, God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands above your head and just tell God thank you one more time. Hallelujah. We don't have tomorrow. We got right now. Hallelujah. Come on till you can feel it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just you and the Lord. Hallelujah. Just you and the Lord. Just you. You and the Lord. Just you and the Lord. Hallelujah. You brought us a mighty long way. You brought new life church of faith a mighty long way. You brought this church a mighty long way. You brought us from the, oh my God, from the living room to the mall. You brought us. You brought us. Some of us from the drug house. Some of us from the jail house. Some of us from molestation and abuse. Some of us from divorce and separation. Some of us from suicide. Some of us, oh my God, from abuse. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You brought me, you brought me, you brought me. Hey, <laughs> from a mighty long way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. You brought us, you brought us, you brought us from a mighty long way. Come on, get some hugs of love in this place. Hallelujah. God bless you today. God bless you today, my neighbor. God bless you today. I love you with the God kind of love. No, no restraint, no condition. Hallelujah. You can't make me not love you. You can't stop me from loving you. I love you anyhow. Hallelujah. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter what you do. The God kind of love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Your announcements are as follows. Okay, the little sweeties have dance practice each choir. Okay, choir practice each Wednesday of this month, seven o'clock p.m. Okay, amen. Okay, men's conference here at New Life Church of Faith. The importance of mentoring, Saturday, May 26, 2012, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, the facilitator facilitator will be Dr. Harold Davis, creator of Talks Mentoring Movement. We would like for all men to bring sons, nephews, friends. Uh, this is very important. We need to teach these young men um, a lot of things. Our young men are in trouble, so we need to have our men to come and help our young men uh, to be strong men, okay? So can we get that going on, men? Okay? All right. The importance of mentoring, amen. Okay, Tierra Brown and her dance team will be hosting a car wash this Saturday at AutoZone on Vermilion Street, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please come and support them. Car wash, only $5, and additional donations are accepted. The family of John William Anglin acknowledges with deep appreciation your kind expressions of sympathy. This is from Eugene and Loretta Thompson. Thank Amen. you. May birthdays, May 21st, Sister Hope Asiaka. Oh. May 23rd, Sister Tamara Jimson. May 24th, Brother Christopher Leak. And May 26th, Sister Tiffany Bell. May anniversaries, May 21st, Brother Terry and Sister Lucy Evans, one year. Amen. At this time, we would like to welcome our first-time visitors. If we have any first-time visitors, will you please stand? Anyone? Okay. We would just like to say good morning and welcome to everyone. And um, still going to do the song? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to announce, don't forget today, May the 20th, we're sending my daughter, LaToya Miller-Young, off to Park Forest, sorry, Oak Park, <laughs> Illinois, to go to school, and she's going to be there for good. You know, everybody's thinking she's just going to school, because that's what we're saying. That's going to be her residence for the rest of her life, I guess. I guess I come up there. LaToya, you stand up. I know everybody know who you are, but... I thank God for Miani and Pastor Miller's our daughter, how she worked in this ministry Amen. since she was five years old. Amen. She sang in the choir with the adults, and she was my main soprano. She was the, and she could really sing at five or six, or whatever. But I thank God for her in this ministry, and how the the uh, she became the choir director and the praise worship leader and the uh, youth director. You know. Lord had truly blessed her and her children. I'm going to miss them even though I'm going to be up there every other weekend. But I'm just asking you, you're all invited. So if y'all don't see me, y'all know where I am. So, every, uh, so I'm just inviting everybody to just send her off today in the banquet uh, room right after service. Amen. We're having a, um, what am I trying to say, open house for her. You, don't, you, you can come, just greet her, tell her goodbye. Uh, whatever you want to do, just come on in, and we're going to have a little bit of knickknacks to eat. Amen. Uh, kibbles and bits, Marilyn said. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to turn it over to Sister uh, Lucas. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. You know, I, I was watching something, uh, a Christian channel on, 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 I don't know if anybody else, you know, had their channels on early this morning, uh, regarding uh, truthinaction.com, it's a a website that you that Christians can get on regarding Christians uh, uh, beliefs and our rights you know against certain things and and Christians are being persecuted Amen. for what they believe in and they actually showed this lady that was uh, on this panel and she was speaking to a les one of the legislators you know on the panel and and one of the, one of the legislators said you, you just go get off get off now or else you be led on we don't want to hear nothing about what you say 
we, we're not interested in, in, your, in, in what, your, what your rights are. He says, just move, just move it. And um, they have a, a P.O. box number, too, that I, I am going to leave, and you can call, and it's a form that you can fill out, you know, for, uh, for Christians, what we believe in. And what's happening in the United, this is in the United States, and what's happening is these people are actually, and then they even showed another lady that she spoke out against something, and, and it, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but she's, she's actually looking at 10 years in prison for that. And uh, they are getting ready to, uh, uh, in some cities, you know, in the United States, they're actually looking uh, at certain laws that they're going to uh, put in place where Christians can't even speak out against, you know, what they believe, you know, the Bible, what they believe in and whatever. In other words, uh, you, you can't advocate for any, anything because, uh, in other words, your freedom of speech is just white. You know, the, the freedom of speech that, that we had in the past, we need to go, we need to actually restore our freedom of speech because we're, we're, we're actually getting persecuted for what we believe in. You know, if we don't believe in certain things like, you know, uh, men and women marrying, you know, two men married, then we're going to be persecuted for that. Or uh, say, a, a men, say a pastor uh, decides that, you know, he said, well, uh, say a couple, come, a, a couple of the same sex come to him and say, well, we want to get married. And the pastor said, you know, I, I can't marry you. That particular person can go to the law, get a lawyer, and sue the whole church. For, I mean, for millions and millions and millions of dollars. And we as Christians, we, we need to step forward and, and get on this line. I'm going to leave this. I'm, I'm going to leave this. Um, uh, uh, sticking on the board or whatever, or Sister Tabitha, you could type it out, whatever you need to do to get it clear. So I, I just want this to, want us Christians kind of band together on this. Amen. Okay, that will be all for the announcements, and I will turn it over to the choir. Amen.
Rest on your feet. Is there anybody reaping this morning what the devil stole from you? Is there anybody in this room can testify you took back some of what the devil had stole from you? Come on, shout glory. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hear the Lord saying, and that ain't all. <laughs> what you already reaping from what the devil stole, God said, that ain't all. There's some more blessings coming your way. There's some more things that the devil got to let go. There's some more payments he got to make to you. Your account hasn't been balanced yet. There's some more healings coming your way. There's some more financial blessings coming your way. Hallelujah. There's some more breakthroughs in your personal life. So God, we thank you for the word through the song of the choir today. I'm taking back everything that the devil stole. And I'm getting ready to reap more of the harvest. Now, God, let every heart be receptive to your word today. Let there be no deaf ears. There be no hardened hearts. But, God, let everyone have an hear, ear to hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. In the master's name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, God. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody shout glory. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on and shout thank you, Jesus. Somebody got a little energy, just do a couple hallelujahs. Just a little hallelujah. Come on, just a little leaping for the Lord. Hallelujah, God been so good. He been so good. Whoo. Oh, hallelujah. You may be seated. 
God's been so good, we ought to run the aisles every Sunday. I don't care if it ain't a, you know, I don't care that this is a big location. Run around your chair. Tell your neighbor, give him something. Give the Lord something. Amen. How many folks can testify God been good? Come on. Shout hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's raise the roof a little bit. Hallelujah. Woo. Tomorrow's not promised. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. I give all praise, all credit, all glory, all honor. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Honor to my lovely companion today and to my mother-in-law on today. And thank the Lord for my brother and his wife and family being here today. Elder Robert Miller and Evangelist Pat Miller and granddaughter Journey out. Boom. Amen. Wave your hand, world traveler Robin. Stand up. This is a uh, niece all the way from Germany. By the way, of Memphis, Mississippi, Danville. Praise the Lord for Renee, and Bobby, and Bobby's wife to be. I think. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what his daddy said. You gonna marry a boy? You gonna marry? It's gonna come out in the message today. It's coming out in the message. Y'all in the right place. Amen. All the elders, ministers today, and praise the Lord today. Everybody's, if not a member, you visited here before, so we welcome you today. You are welcome here at New Life Church of Faith. We thank God for you. I'm going to just talk a little bit today. Thank God the Lord took your first lady and pastor to Michigan to be with our brother-in-law. Come on, let's thank God for bringing him through his surgery. Seven hour surgery was scheduled. Hour 20 minutes, God brought him out. Come on here. You better give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. God is so good. God is so good. My mother in law, she went around the horn. She talked to all of us after he came out so quick. What you say? Mother the Lord did it. What you say? Mother the Lord, did what you say? God did it so quick. We were preparing for, you know, hours of waiting. We went to get a little something to eat and come back, and it was over. The next day, he was sitting in his chair. He wasn't laying down. He was sitting in his chair. Same day after, I'm talking about major surgery. I'm talking about no minor surgery. So we thank God for that good news. Amen? Then the Lord took us to Peoria. As soon as we got back Thursday, Friday, we went to Peoria, and we ministered at the Servant of Christ Ministries over there, one of the churches that have recently come under us, and thank the Lord for Pastor Anthony Randall. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord, he's got a great ministry started there in Peoria, Illinois, so we were blessed to go over there, and we got back here yesterday afternoon, so we thank God that we're here this morning. Amen. And the only reason why I'm talking is not because I don't feel like preaching. I just believe I need to talk this one through. You know, a lot of us like that good ear-grabbing preaching. Oh, Lord, <laughs> let me tell you one more thing. Uh, I'm going to uh, you tell someone. Uh, you don't understand me. <laughs> and when we get through with all that, we ain't got a clue what he said. But we feel real good. I don't want y'all to feel real good. I want y'all to get the message. Because the message will still make you feel good if you get it. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall stand. That's what we're going to talk about. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of God shall stand. I don't understand what all the discussion and the debate about 
in the earth about what's right and what's wrong. We got the Bible. It's like it's no longer uh, considered as the final say-so of how we live our lives. So I want to just talk to us today about heaven and earth is going to pass away, but the word of God will stand. Hmm. So I don't know what you build your foundation on, but if it ain't the word of God, it's sinking sand. It don't matter who else came after Jesus and said they believe this is okay and that's okay. What did the Bible say? What did the Bible say? Whenever you're in the discussion or into a, a debate or have your opinion, God ain't listening to you. We having that conversation among ourselves. But God's not in that conversation. He's not even trying to give an explanation. He already said, my word is settled. <laughs> so I want to talk to you today about today, yesterday, and forevermore. I don't care what's going on. The word's going to stand. Amen. You ain't got to like it. But it don't matter if you don't like it. God ain't going to change because you get mad. And even in the midst of this preaching today, this teaching today, if I offend you and it causes you to repent, I don't take it back. If I'm really concerned about your soul, then I should not be concerned about your feelings. See, because if I'm concerned about your feelings, then I won't tell you what the words say. Amen. Matthew 6 and 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So every day we ought to be a seeker of the word. Amen. Every one of us in here ought to make it a part of our schedule to have the word carved into our schedule. Because why? Heaven and earth is going to pass away. So I need to make sure that I'm living my life by the word of God. Amen. The word of God is the first say so and the last say so. So you need to know that if you're not, uh, you know, uh, constantly reminding yourself of what God has said, you can be tricked into believing what man has said is more important than what God has said. Matthews 24 and 35. Matthews 24 and 35. Get some witness here. 24 and 35. Matthews 24 and 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Is that Bible? Is that in your Bible? Under some translation to come up to that similar saying, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So, sagging pants going to pass away. Uh-oh. Cool mama and cool daddy's going to pass away. Amen. Bentleys and Porsches and Cadillacs are going to pass away. White picket fences and beautiful mansions are going to pass away. PhDs are going to pass away. Bachelors and, and master's degrees are going to pass away. But the word of God is not going to pass away. Everything else is going to pass away. Now, listen. The word of God says, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What ever the devil offers you, he cheating you. Because if you were to be given a billion dollars for your soul, he cheated you. Amen. If he gives you the, the most handsome man, the most uh, debonair person, uh, he's cheating you if you exchange that for your soul. 
the most uh, gorgeous, most beautiful woman, uh, no matter how intelligent, no matter how nice she is, if you exchange your soul for her, you got cheated. Because the scripture says, what can you give <laughs> in exchange for your soul? If you, if you gain the whole world. Somebody say your soul is priceless. Your soul is priceless. I don't care what the offer is. There's nothing that's more valuable than your soul. So whatever the devil's offering to you, it's not a fair exchange. Amen. So whatever today may be your area that the enemy has offered you something and you've taken it, I just want you to know up front, you got cheated. Amen. You've been cheated. You, you've been robbed. Because your soul is priceless. The scripture says if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, what will it profit you? That means you have not in any way improve your life situation by giving your soul. Amen. Hmm. Who want to go to heaven? Wave your hand. Somebody say you better word up. <laughs> you want to go to heaven, you better get the word. No, don't get your feelings. Don't, don't, don't get your, your, yourself all caught up in the, the end time coolness of this world. Get, get the word. Amen. Okay. Hmm. Our president messed up the other day. Whew. See, I don't care what you legalize by man's standards, God's word is final. Hmm. I don't care what we put on the books. I don't care how we arrange it to make it fit us. When it's all said and done, heaven and earth going to pass away. But the word of God shall stand. So the president talked to Malia and Sasha. And they told him it was all right to embrace same-sex marriages. Malia and Sasha, no disrespect. You know, we on YouTube and stuff. I hope the president tune in. Well, I ain't trying to be bashful with this. My sister-in-law got up and said they're going to lock us up. I signed up to die. Any chickens in here? <laughs> Amen. No disrespect to the president, but the president's word ain't above God's word. The American government is not above God's word. The legislators are not above God's word. Okay, I'm going to bring it all the way down where we live. The preacher. Word ain't above God's word. Do you know churches, some of them, are having conferences and they're voting on whether or not it's okay to ordain homosexual pastors? And I said they are having conferences and in their conference, in their organization, they are excluding what God said and now voting on what they think. Now listen, ain't no disrespect to nobody in here because this thing hitting everybody. That demon is loose all over America. And if it ain't personally in your house, it's in somebody's house you know. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have to stand on the word. We ain't judging nobody. We're not condemning nobody. But we need to go with the Bible. So the president and the legislators and the Congress, everybody going to stand before God and give an account. Amen. See, uh, <laughs> do you know America could be the next candidate for Sodom and Gomorrah? Don't y'all don't don't y'all get don't get too comfortable because see, America's only three hundred and fifty million. There are seven billion people that live in the earth, and so if God was to burn up America, there'd be uh, six point five billion people left. We ain't so big that God can't send down fire. Come on now. We ain't too big to fall. We're not too big for God to reach us. 
See, we legislate as if God is somehow at a disadvantage because we say we America. But I want you to know God showed us clearly what he thought in that demonstration in Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know, I've not traveled that far, so I don't know if the rest of the world is embracing homosexuality like America is. We may be the brightest light that the Lord see that's hugging that demon. <laughs> see, heaven and earth can pass away, but the word gonna stand. So God's word is not up for debate or voting. In America, we have what we call a democracy. A democracy government votes on stuff. God's word is not up for voting. You can't vote on whether or not you're going to do what God say. I mean, you can, but you're stupid. I mean, no disrespect. <laughs> Old folks will tell you what? Don't you spew my word. About that time, it's going across your lips. Ba -da -da -da. Sit down there, Junior. Huh? Grab them old big old lips and pick them up and get on out of them. Hey, Amen. You couldn't even get all frowned up in front of your grandma or grandpa or your mom and daddy. Like you didn't like what they said. Are you looking back at me? <laughs> no, no, no. So, I'm not judging the president or anybody else. I'm just telling you what the Bible say. God is not embracing homosexuality. God said it's an abomination. God didn't ordain for a man to sleep with a man and a woman to sleep with a woman. God didn't. Now don't get mad at me. Call God up. Tell God, the creator that gave you life and the breath that you breathe, tell God, I don't agree with you. That's the one you need to send an email to. Don't text me. Don't write me. I'm just telling you, it's in the Bible. I decided to go with the word of God. My assignment here is not to make any friends in this church while I'm preaching the gospel. And if I come down from here and you don't talk to me because I preach the gospel, I don't have a problem with that. Because my assignment is not to be your friend. My assignment is to be your pastor. And my assignment is to watch for your soul. And if I'm concerned about your soul, I'll tell you what the Lord say. I'm telling you God is against fornication. Y'all quiet now. See, homosexuality is so uh, popular now because the pulpit didn't deal with fornication. Y'all quiet now. I don't care. Get mad. <laughs> Every one of our children that are ready to have sex, we need to take them to the altar with their husband and their wife and get them married. She 13, get them married then. He 14, get them married. That's what the Bible say. Sex is for married people. Y'all ain't saying nothing now. Oh, I know, I know in America, you give them birth control pills and you give them abortions, but don't make my baby get married. She and he is too young. They too young to be married. So skip what the Bible say. Forget the word of God. No, no, no. She too young. But she, she got a boyfriend. <laughs> he got a girlfriend. Ain't that cute? Ain't nowhere in there where he said you get to sow your wild oats and then get married. Y'all ain't saying nothing now, church folks. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. See, the word of God is addressing us so that we can keep from going to hell. Tell me you love your daughter. You tell me you love your son. And you tell them it's okay to fornicate. And you will go with them to get a birth control pill. Instead of make them go to the altar and get married. Uh oh y'all quiet. Y'all quiet now. Y'all quiet now. Cause no, no, no. They too young to be married. Are they? It's the natural process that kicks in. It kicks in at 13 and 14. Then what does that mean? 
oh, no, no, that ain't what that means, Pastor. No, you know, it's just that this food got hormones in it. And <laughs> you know, these kids are blossoming too early. Mm -hmm, they're blossoming all right. College students are not told to be in relationships. They're told to only have one night stand. Don't worry about settling down until you get out of college. You just sleep around for four years and then, see, that's what the world system tell college students. If some of the college students would testify, they'll tell you, pastor telling you the truth. They ain't pushing marriage in college. They pushing sex. Y'all quiet now. Matter of fact, in college, you're supposed to experiment to see if you gay or not. You're about to find out what side you flipping on. And nobody gonna say nothing to you if you sampling a man, you a man, you sampling a woman, you trying to find out what side you on. The Bible ain't never told you find out if you gay or not. You ain't got no proof that God said find out if you gay. Y'all quiet now. Hmm. We're in that hour where America could be a crispy critter. Come on, we are candidates for the brimstone. Every abomination under the heavens is going on in Danville. Uh-oh. Break it all the way down. He might just want to fry Danville. <laughs> Homosexuality is in Danville. Fornications in Danville. Adulteries in Danville. Y'all quiet now. Mm -hmm. So, 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 no, 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 don't get yourself, you know, all comfortable with saying, well, you know, God gonna, you know, come one day, but not for us. Why not? A lot of folks don't like this preaching this morning. <laughs> but I'm not concerned about you liking the preaching. I'm concerned about your soul. I'm concerned that when you stand before the judgment seat. Okay, there you go, Holy Spirit. Deacon Forrest, stand up here, please. Sister Lynn, stand up here, please. Mother Philpott, stand up here. Make a line for me, please. If you don't mind, Mother. Can you do that if you feel like it? I ain't going to hold you too long. Let's put Mother in the front. Let's judge her first. <laughs> ah! Yeah, make a line. Yeah, yeah, no, no. One, one behind the other. Get behind Mother Philpott. Deacon, please. You don't want to get judged first, do you? Get behind Lynn. The Bible says we shall stand before the white throne of judgment. We shall stand before the judgment of God. And God shall open up the book of the deeds that we've done in our bodies. And he is the alpha and he's the omega. He's a righteous judge. Is it Pat or Patricia? Patricia, Philpot, we have your DNA. We know who you are who you are. We have your record. Nobody else's is going to be talked about your record. I'm going to judge you out of my book, not out of American government. Not out of your family, not out of your pastor. I'm going to judge you out of the book. And so right here, according to the word of God, you may take your seat. All y'all can take your seats. Mm -hmm. Look, look, look how quiet it got. Everybody. I thought the Lord going to prophesy through the pastor and just mess up this church. They was first three on the killing flow, but he going to call the rest of us up. We are not ready to be judged this morning. If you're not ready to be judged this morning, you better not leave here today before you repent of your sins. If you know you ain't ready to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, don't you leave here before you repent today. I don't care if it's all right in America. If God say it ain't right, it ain't right. I don't care if there's other folks in this church practicing a homosexual, lesbian, fornicating, adultery life. You better not leave. Because it's going to be one person 
at a time that will be judged. Everybody will get their chance to defend yourself. Okay, come on, it's time to defend yourself. What are you going to tell God on judgment day? Lord, America said it was okay for two men to marry. God, America said it was okay for two women to marry. God, America said it's okay to shock. God, America says it's okay to fornicate. God, America says it's okay to have abortions. God, America says it's okay to sample men and women. You ain't going to tell Jesus that. I know what you're going to tell him. Please, Lord, please. Please, Lord, please. Please, Lord, please. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me, Lord. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Do you know most for most folks that's got any sense in a courtroom are sorry? Come on. It ain't too many arrogant inmates or those that are defendants coming in the courtroom. Most of them are very humble. Just the night before, they was dirty hairy. They were low down Bertha. But when they get to the courtroom, <laughs> please, Your Honor, I'd like to beg the court's apology for. Uh, I'm, I'm guilty of the crime that I've been charged with. Please have mercy. The judgment of Christ will not extend mercy. Y'all better catch this right now. Your mercy is now. I said God has given all of us a moment right now to repent before when you stand before the judgment seat, there'll be no mercy. It will be judgment. It will not be, Lord, I'm sorry. He said, I know, but according to my word, I shall judge you for the deeds done in your body. Whether they were good or whether they were evil. No mercy at the judgment seat. Mercy is now. Come on, somebody said, thank you, Lord. Now, don't be stupid and run out of mercy. Because everybody figuring on mercy because you've been getting it so long, you think you're going to have it. But one day the Bible said, he'll crack the sky. <laughs> and it's going to be the most dreadful day. For the Bible said, everybody in the grave will hear his voice and some will get up to everlasting life with him and some shall get up to everlasting damnation. Your mercy is now. This morning, if you ain't saved, you get to this altar today. Get, I already told you in the message that if you uh, so in love with a man or woman, that ain't worth your soul. If you hungry or craving that demon of homosexuality, it ain't worth your soul. We ain't judging nobody in here. We ain't judging nobody's family members. We're just telling you the word of God say is sin. And the wages of sin is death. Hmm. <laughs> You love your children, why would you tell them that it's okay to break God's law? If you love them, you'll tell them the truth even if they never talk to you again. See, they're trying to make us feel like we are unrighteous if we tell our children the truth. No, 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 no. You, you should love your, I love my son, I love my daughters, I love my grandbabies, but they will hear nothing but the truth from this father and grandfather. Sister Miller ain't my friend when I'm preaching. I come down her street. She know it too. She looks straight ahead. She's a professional now. She just. <laughs> he, he know me. He know me. He know me. But she know I love her. She know I love her. If I love her, I tell her the truth. Is that right? How many know God loves us so he's telling us the truth? This is not popular in this hour. We are right for the rapture. America is right, right now for the judgment of God. It's everywhere. It ain't popular right now to be a preacher. It ain't popular to be a Christian. We are hated right now for our Christianity. I'm talking about when you're standing with God. 
When you say, I ain't drinking, I ain't drugging, I ain't whoring, I ain't lying and cheating, you are not popular. Amen. You're standing on the word of God. You ain't judging nobody. You just say, I'm not partaking of the sin that y'all in. They mad at you because you won't sample with them. I'm not sampling with you. Amen. Come on. They won't sit with you at the lunch hour if you ain't going to sit there and, and, and talk, uh, know about some sin stuff. You want to talk about God, they won't sit with you. They want to curse the company that they're getting the paycheck from. I want you to join in with them. Yeah, I hate this place. I'm not sitting with you, stupid. We ain't got no other job. We're going to sit here and curse the place we're in. I believe this place going to close. I believe this place going to close. Them stupid engineers, these folks don't know what they're doing. They're going to lose all the contracts. I ain't sitting nowhere near you. I think I'm going to agree with you. The Bible said any two agree. Touching anything, boom. Well, the company sure did close down. It sure did. We ain't got no job. I told you the people were stupid. No, you cursed it every day you work there. Wisdom says you bless the place where you work at. God, thank you for this place. God, thank you for this paycheck. God, thank you that I can feed myself. God, let it prosper. Let it grow. Let it do more than what it's doing. So I'm not going to be friends with the folks that are embracing the devil's poison. I ain't judging you. I ain't condemning you. I'm just telling you the Bible says. Somebody say the Bible say. <laughs> Come on, get St. Luke. We'll let y'all go. 10 and 12. St. Luke 10 and 12. Somebody say the word of God. Forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand. I know it ain't popular right now being a Christian. I know it ain't popular being in this room even today if you're walking with God. But I'm telling you, there's going to come a day when you're going to be grateful that you stayed on the Lord's side. He said, right now, you see every now and then a traveler, but the road to destruction is broad. Hmm. I don't know, but I'm positive, uh, uh, you know, with some confidence that they were packed out at the clubs last night. I don't have no doubt they had plenty of business Saturday night at the clubs. And what was the worst thing they heard? Last call for alcohol. What? Then after that, it was after the party. Yeah, when you're in the world, you don't never get tired. It's only when you get saved that the preacher got to hurry up and watch the clock. And when you was at the club, you was just, oh, man, don't let this be the last call. <sighs> and then when they say last call, you say, where the party at? Where the party at? And now it's juke joint time. You can't even get through there because there's a hole in the floor, but you jump up in there. Just like a vampire, here come the sun. I better go on in now. All night till the sun come up. Elder Oldham, we ain't had a shed in in this church in a long time. You can't hear people praying in shed ins in the church. They snoring. Coming to the shed in with a blanket and a pillow. Don't y'all bother me. I'm going to be over here praying. <laughs> you know I'm telling the truth. People looking like demons about 2 o'clock in the morning because they so mad that they in the shed in. I'm sleepy. I'm hungry too. Talk about fast. I eat fast. I got the sugar. <laughs> you know I'm telling the truth. Your soul is on the line. Hmm. I got to finish. 
Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I'm pastoring folks that won't come back on Sunday night. Uh-oh. I talk about one hour. I cut it down to the cheapest time I could get. One, can, you, can you pray with me one hour? No. I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear them preachers. I don't want to do nothing. I'm done. What about prayer meeting Wednesday night? What about 6 a.m.? None of them. Chase the man all night. Chase the woman all night. Chase crack cocaine all night. Chase the gambling boat all night. Liquor store owners are rich. Lottery folks, who own the lottery? We don't even know, stupid. You get $300 million winning the lottery, they give you $150 million. Who got the other $150 million? Don't tell them, they're stupid. God say tithe and you guarantee yourself a return always. It ain't no one in 30 million, one in 150 million. Guaranteed every tither receives a return on their giving. That's what the word says. Church folks won't tithe but they got lottery tickets in their glove box and all over their house. Coming in here trying to get a number from me. What verse? I'm, I'm tired of that 6 and 33. I ain't never hit that. Been playing that for four years now. Six and thirty-three ain't never come up. We didn't even know why you quit New Life. You got tired of me giving you a dead number every week. I'm gonna go to another church. These preachers got different scriptures. They all up in Ezekiel, Jeremiah, seventeen and five. Seventeen and five. Been playing six and 33 for five years and ain't failed yet. No Sunday night offering, no Wednesday offering, no pastor's offering, no power bill offering, no mortgage offering, no tax offering, no offering. Just pay your tithe and your offering. I can't do that. But when I'm running with the devil, I don't give him 10%. I give him 110. Matter of fact, I bought sin on credit. Oh, you got your next check. You are already owing the dope man. Now I got how many hits? Oh, so I'm into you for how much right now? Arguing in the church. The church folks arguing with folks about God's word about giving. Arguing about tithes is out. We don't have to tithe. You gave the devil 110%. Now you want to try to dissect the word to eliminate you tithing. Y'all quiet now. You know that many thieves was in here. Mm. Okay, I told y'all we wasn't going to be preaching. We're just talking a little bit this morning. St. Luke 10 and 12. Uh -huh. 10 and 12 of Luke, y'all there? 10 and 12 says, but I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Every place that we preach in this gospel and people reject us, he said it's going to be better for the folks in Sodom than it will be for you. Everyone that rejects the gospel of Jesus Christ, how can it be better than Sodom when they say you can't find Sodom? The best historians, the best archaeological people have researched their best uh, 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 ideal of maybe where Sodom and Gomorrah is, is underneath the Dead Sea. That's their best calculation, that Sodom and Gomorrah is under the Dead Sea. Now, seas are filled with living things, but the Dead Sea, nothing lives there. God says it'd be better for us. Hmm. Come on. 13. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. That's my best. Woe unto them, Bathsheba. Bath, Bath, yeah, that's it. For if the mighty works have been 
been done in Tyre and Sodom, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, seeing, setting in sackcloth and ashes. God said, if, if, if Sodom and Gomorrah had heard this kind of preaching, they would have hurried up and got into consecration. They would have been in all night prayer meetings. They would have been at the noon a day prayer on the 12 or the 6 o'clock, whenever there was a prayer meeting, they would have been right there in prayer. Come on, y'all. Right now, y'all sitting in a moment that is receptive to the word of God. But when you leave this building and you go out there and you talk to folks about this gospel you just heard, they will tell you, get away from me. I don't want to hear it. Amen. See, the president did not get elected by uh, black folks or white folks or Jewish folks or gay folks. He got elected because Jesus put him in. I wish I, I, wished I had the hookup where I could have called him myself. And told him, don't worry about approving homosexuality. If you get back in, God going to put you back in because you didn't get in the first time. But man, God is the one that put you in. He's the one that will bring you down. <laughs> Too many of us think man is running things. Man ain't running nothing. If you ain't careful, they'll throw their little weight of money around and tell you if you don't do what we say. Amen. I don't know if he believed it for real or not. All I know is he was having an evolution on it. You know, evolution means I'm progressing more and more and more until I finally say, okay, I believe it now. God says sin. God says sin. Love your family members, love your friends, but tell them what does say the Lord. Amen. God's my witness. I'm not going to the gay wedding. I'm not performing one. Amen. Are you judging? I ain't judging. I'm going with God. God says wrong. God says wrong. Not Pastor Milk. God says wrong. God says sin. How many know God says it's wrong to be a child molester? How many know God says it's wrong to be a murderer? God says it's wrong to be a thief and a liar. Are we going to go ahead and say because if America adapts some kind of rules that say it's okay now, we're going to go with it or we're going to go with God? Y'all quiet now. Amen. God says wrong. Amen. So if God says wrong, I'm going with God. I'm about to let y'all go. Hold on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Miller. She already heard it once this morning. She want to hear it some more. I like her. I think I'm going to keep her. Amen. She's a great supporter. Amen. Anyway, I ain't going to get into all that because I know. No? So I'm talking about your wife. Ugh. I can't talk about my wife. I better not talk about you. <laughs> you fall out of the floor. <laughs> Amen. All right. Uh, 14, 10 and 14. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyra and Sodom at the judgment than for you. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to finish. Romans 1. This is just a little review. Romans 1. Romans 1. We're getting close to the end. How many know we are a good candidate for uh, the, the brimstone? Come on now, based on the scripture, are we a good candidate for the fire? I don't know about the rest of the world, but I know America is more and more pushing that this lifestyle is acceptable. This is America. This is where we live in that. Do you know that people want to be validated by what their choices are? That's why you and I are persecuted when we don't validate what folks want to do. I'm never going to validate. I'm never going to get my blessing to gambling boats. If one family is destroyed behind a gambling boat, I could not live with myself if I gave approval for it. it can, we can create all kind of wealth in this community if we really, really wanted to. Gambling boat ain't the only way for us to get a Danville off the ground. Put a mall out there by 74. 
door and see what happened. Put a bunch of business all on every exit and just see what happened. Five miles away from the interstate? Duh. Every city you go in, they got all the business. As soon as you get near their city, lined up on that highway, talking about, hey, here we are. Come on, get some. 100,000 cars pass by here every day. They ain't coming to no village mall. Everybody in here that travel, you don't never go five miles out of your way when you traveling. Matter of fact, you hate every mile you got to travel. So the quickest pull over and get a room and get something to eat and I'm out. Matter of fact, I'm a little leery of what might be in your town. Oh, no, no, this just don't look quite right to me. I'm back on the interstate. If your gas station is too far, your little restaurant, because everybody ain't loved all over America. Amen. Okay, okay, I know y'all said, please. All right, I'm about done. Okay, I got two of them, my mother-in-law and my wife. Hey, man, I hear somebody way in the back. Preach. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all the secret. The more y'all encourage me, the sooner I get done. <laughs> you know, we all got a little bit of stubbornness in them. They want me to quit. Well, I ain't going to quit. Give me Deuteronomy. <laughs> it was just in my spirit. You know, preachers lie while they preach it. They just don't want to quit. I want to get you one more scripture. They just immature because they know you don't like them. So they just stay up there longer. <laughs> 1 and 18. Come on, we got to get done. We're talking about the word of God shall not pass away. Amen? So I want to make it perfectly clear. I'm not agreeing with our president, no disrespect. I'm agreeing with the Bible. 100%. I'm not agreeing with no parent in here that embraces that spirit and says, okay, because it's your child. I'm agreeing with the Bible. I'm not agreeing with you, your family member. I'm not agreeing with you. Anybody in my family that uh, exposed that spirit, I don't agree with them. They'll come and tell you. Amen. I ain't just a bit preaching. I'm preaching everybody. We don't have a whole lot of folks that like Sister Miller and I. They think they all that. We ain't nothing. We'll tell you the truth. So that's the bottom line. You don't like me because I'm going to tell you the truth. You can't call me and get me to agree with you on some junk. I'm going to go out and fornicate tonight. How about that, Pastor? I'm going to live in this man. Check him out. Check this woman out. How about They don't call me on that crazy. They already know. I'm going to get married, but I'm going to go ahead and fornicate for a while. How about that? We's in love, but we can't get our papers together for a while. Uh -huh, you ain't calling me. I tell them all the time around this church, I don't charge for uh, wedding ceremonies. Get married right now and have a big ceremony when you get some money. At least you'll go to heaven married instead of going to hell with a dress on. Talk about, Woo! I waited too long. I waited, waited too long. Yeah. And I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to move on. But y'all know the marriage ceremony about 15 minutes. The real marriage started after that night is over. You wake up the next morning with stank breath. Who is this? <laughs> That's when the real world really comes into view. Who is this? Where your hair? Where is your teeth? What? Where is your leg? What? Get up the first day, they didn't move their whole family in. Well, see, I forgot to tell you <laughs> that where I go, my people's go. <laughs> oh, oh, and you signed a lifetime contract. <laughs> you know I'm telling the truth. Amen. People want to get married. Single people, you selfish, stay single. I'm going to keep telling you. You don't like nobody tell you nothing, stay single. When you get married, you'll have this other human now always asking you stuff. Where you going? What you doing? How long you going to do it? Did you check with me first? No, no, I don't like that. 
No, I don't want that. No, you can't go there. Get up. Yes, I get up at 6. I need people that live with me to get up with. <laughs> What's this hurricane going? No, I, I sleep with a fan. What the devil? I'm burning up. I'm burning up. I like it hot when I sleep. Come on. You want to be married? You better understand what you're signing up for. You're going to marry somebody different than yourself. And it takes maturity to be married. I'm trying to help somebody. This is my fourth message, but I'm telling you, you, you need to grow up if you're going to get married. If you want to be a little old crybaby, pout, fall out, stay single. I'm going to go home to my mama. I'm going home to my mama. You should have stayed single. How you look a grown person running home to your mama, running home to your daddy. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about abuse. I'm not talking about cheating on you and beating you. I'm just talking about they didn't want to turn the channel. I'm, I'm leaving. I want to watch Young and the Rest. I want to watch ESPN. My Xbox, she kept turning the channel, turning it on. You should have stayed at home. You ain't ready for marriage. Some of y'all in there right now think marriage is a whole lot of fun or a whole lot of work. You got to learn how to shut up to be married. How many, come on married folks, just say one word. How many of you can just say one word, mess up the whole day? Just one word. Every angel in heaven is pulling on you saying, please don't say it, stupid, please don't say it. I mean it, don't, no, you got to say it. Your mama, what? <laughs> I don't like what you cook. That's it. You're done. That's all the money you got. It's over. <laughs> Just learn most disciplined life you can live is a married life. That's why so many folk get divorced because they ain't learned how to shut up. I want everybody to chime in with them. No, you got to learn how to go home and submit to your wife and your husband. Y'all quiet now. How did I get into this? Oh, God. Okay, the word of God is right. Let every husband submit to his wife. Let every wife submit to her husband. That's the Bible? Ephesians in the sixth chapter, somewhere in there. Amen. Five and 20, the preacher says. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm done. No, I ain't, but I'm almost done. <laughs> I promise y'all. Then I want y'all over the next door at about 2 o'clock, so I got another hour. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. As soon as I dismiss, we're going over there. Socialize. 18. 1 and 18. 1 and 18. Look what it says. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. God said his wrath is revealed from heaven against everyone who now say righteousness is unrighteous. Everyone that say that it's unrighteous for us to stand with God in this last hour, God said my wrath is going to be revealed. Everybody that say it's acceptable to have a man and a man and a woman and a woman, God said I'm going to reveal it from heaven. Do y'all know what the uh, uh, people that keep up with the temperature of the earth have said? This last winter was the hottest winter on record. Ever since they've been recording temperature, last winter, this winter we just come out of, it was the warmest. He promised us he wasn't going to drown us. He promised. I ain't going to drown y'all next time. He's going to burn y'all up. Tell your neighbor, hint. <laughs> it is awful warm to be. How many was in January in, in Danville in February? You was like, what? And I know my deacon over here who pushed the snow was like, what? What is snow? Amen. Somebody says it's getting warmer. Is sin increasing, yes or no? Come on, somebody a little bit older. 30 years ago, you would have never heard about people demanding to be recognized as same-sex marriages. Now listen, I'm going to try to say this respectfully as I can. But everybody that was a teenager, remember how hard it was being picked on when you're a teenager. You know, your ears and your head ain't all grew out the same until, you know, you got big ears. What's wrong with your hair? 
Your feet is all crooked. I mean, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're a little teenager, the peer pressure being a teenager. Because peer pressure, teenager time, is a time when your friends pick on you for no reason. You can't help how you look. You can't help that you live over here in the shack that you're living in. But teenagers says, that's where y'all live. Teenagers talk about your daddy, your daddy. You don't know your daddy? Teenagers do that. What you think is going to happen to these teenagers once their friends find out they got two daddies and two mommies? Which one of your mommies do your hair? Uh-oh. Which one of your daddies is catching the ball and which one is? I'm talking about teenagers. Right now, we're having reports of teenagers committing suicide because they're coming out of the closet saying they're homosexuals. And when they come out of the closet as a teenager when they're homosexual, other teenagers pick on them. I ain't saying this right. Y'all hear the message. I'm just telling you this is the reality of making those choices. Real quick. 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it, showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even the eternal power uh, and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Somebody say it's clear. It's all around us. God's clearly spoken about his position concerning sexual sin. Not just homosexuality, fornication, and adultery, and all this other stuff that's going on. Because that when they knew God, they glorified God, glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but become vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. The more you say no to God, the more you think wrong is right. Because when your heart gets darkened, you will not understand what's right anymore. You will really believe in your heart. Ain't nothing wrong with me living with this man or this woman. Ain't nothing wrong with me fornicating. Everybody doing that. Ain't nothing wrong with a woman hooked up with a woman, a man hooked up. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Because your heart's been darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And God said, I'm giving them over to do whatever they want to do. I'm not telling you that I'm going to give you my blessing, but I'm going to let you have a right. And I read in the Bible somewhere, as much as we may not want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, apply it to homosexuality and that lifestyle, but God said, choose you this day whom you will serve. Is that right? Chose, choose the evil or choose the good. But how many know everybody has a right to choose? You don't have a right to choose the punishment, though. Hello? You can choose the crime, but you don't get to choose the time. You can break in, you can rob, but you don't get to tell the judge, I only want six months. <laughs> judge said, no, you're getting 30 years. That ain't right. You didn't check and read the fine print. You can go right out here today and act a fool, but you don't get to decide if the police get to stun gun you or shoot you and all the other stuff they do. He shot me. What would you do? I was robbing. They stunned me. Three times. They didn't have to stun me three times. You don't get to decide how many times they stun you. Ask Rodney King. <laughs> okay, they didn't have stun guns. All they had was sticks back then. <sighs> Can we get along? <laughs> That's what Rodney King said. He had all them knots on his head. Why can't we get along? Okay, y'all, it's quick. Come on, stand on your feet. I know. Y'all done. Y'all done. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. Y'all still got them scriptures? In the back? On the big board? Did we have them scriptures? We didn't have them. We had them. They, they, 
they stopped. I wanted them to see it, but anyway, I'm going to read it. 27, and likewise also, the men leaving the natural use of their woman burn in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet. It's clearly in the scripture that God is, a, is absolutely saying it is an abomination, it's sin in the sight of God, homosexuality. It is not acceptable in the sight of God. Amen? Fornication is not acceptable. Adultery is not acceptable in the sight of God. Lying, backbiting, non-forgiveness, hatred, racism, prejudice is not acceptable in the sight of God. Amen? Are we ripe for a rapture or not? Are we ripe? That God could come and just drop fire on America. And the rest of the world could live on for a while. America has decided in, in big, big numbers. 50% that homosexuality is okay with them. 50% they say in their polling. If we were to poll in this room, how many in this room right now would say, I don't believe there's nothing wrong with it. How many know God's word is not up for debate or discussion? So we thank you for tuning in. You've been listening to the New Life Church of Faith. We're located in Danville, Illinois, 1419 Bowman Avenue, uh, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, Champaign, Urbana. We're located at the Lincoln Square Mall. That's 201 Lincoln Square. We're located inside the Lincoln Square Mall. That's on the west end of the mall, 8 o'clock. Whosoever will, let them come. God bless you. Okay. We